absolutely beautiful. Thank you guys so much. KJ, thanks for the music and Sarah for leading and <laughs> and uh, the whole team putting it together. What a blessing. I'm going to need um, some help, and I hope it's okay if I uh, just call out some people. Taylor, would you help me? Toby, would you help me? And uh, uh, just anyone over here. What's that? Yeah, Jonathan, you want to come help too? That'd be fine. Um, I just want to pass these out. Make sure everyone gets one. There should be plenty for everyone. Um, these are the surveys. Thank you, Jonathan. What a good sport. Appreciate it. Um, these are the surveys I've been telling you about as we've been going through our visioning process. And I'm going to take a few minutes talking about them this morning before I, I preach. I want to make sure every member, so if it's not one per family, it's one per member. So like the Heisies, you guys get five, right? So it's not just one. But if you're a guest here, if you're a dorm student, I want you to have one too. If you're a guest, um, I certainly encourage you to take one as well. Um, Arlene, at 11 o'clock last night, it dawned on me that I didn't change the wording. I don't know if, if you caught that as well. Um, you'll notice um, it on the cover page it mentions this is for members only there's some you can do that um, and in previous times when I've done it that's where the language comes from but I actually intended to change that and it just slipped my my editorial process so I do want everyone to fill one out um, we will use the members scores for our primary um, analysis but we would love to hear what guests and I do want our dorm students to especially Give us your opinions on these things, and I'll explain um, what these are about a, a little bit here. But we want you guys to feel like when you're here, this is your church too. Even though you have your own home churches or you go elsewhere, when you're in school and you're here, we want you guys to feel like this is your church. And so I want you to feel very uh, comfortable filling this out. This is um, a part of our process of creating our plans for what we're going to prioritize, what we're going to focus on over the next several years as a church. Um, there's kind of instructions and explanation on the front. I'm not going to go line by line through that. Um, but what I do want to explain is I need you to sign the bottom. I need to I need to know who is turning them in. I will remove the front page and score these anonymously after that. But I do need to know who you are and uh, what role you play in the church. So um, I need you to sign it. Um, if without a signature, I know I'm sounding a little bit like a teacher here, but without a signature, I can't really give it a score. Um, but so please don't forget to sign the bottom. And then when you're going through the actual categories, um, you have 10 points total for each category. It's not on a scale of 1 to 10, give me a number. All right, so for like the first category on ideas for church and Sabbath worship, it's not, oh, I think this is a 10, this is a 7, this is an 8, this is it. No, you have 10 points total. Okay, If you like one idea a whole lot, you can put 10 points, but then you're done. You might like two or three ideas, so you put two points on one, three on another, you know, and then it needs to add up to 10. We, we understand this, right? Um, we've done this many times before, and it's, it's worked fine. If you have questions, let me know. Um, you'll look at some of these, and you'll look, and you'll say, man, three of these are great things. I want to give them all a 10. You're not allowed to do that. You're going to have to make a decision. What is your, how much weight do you put on that idea? Um, and this is kind of the burden. And I want you to go through the tension of, I see all these are great ideas, but we can't do them all. Not all at once, not all at the same time. We have to create a priority list. And I want you to go through the tension of saying, oh man, I want to give high scores to you know six of these things. I want to put eights and sevens and nines and tens. Um, that that's the kind of battle we go through as a church and as leaders when we get all these great ideas or great opportunities uh, we have to sometimes decide well we can only do one or two or three of them we can't do all of them and so it's actually helpful for you to go through that tension as well of saying man I I see some great potential in all of these we will try to get as many of them done and historically when I've done this in other churches over a five-year period we typically get 80 to 90 percent uh, of things addressed or completed um, but you have about six weeks to do this. You don't need to take all six weeks. If you want to do it, uh, I would encourage you to take it home. Don't fill it out while I'm preaching. 
Do I need to repeat that? Don't fill it out while I'm preaching, please. <laughs> I really want you to pray about it. I really want you to take it home, stick it in your Bible, or stick it, you know, where some place where you're going to remember it. Look it over, pray about it, think about it. Write your uh, your scores on here. You can either slide them under my office door. You can scan them and email them. I have a little box out in the foyer. If you want to put them there, bring them back. Uh, just give them to me some way that's convenient to you. I don't have a digital method like where I have like a fillable PDF I can email. I apologize. I'm not super techy when it comes to that. But um, take some time and uh, give us your scores on this. The very last category I'll just mention is, is really just a statistical analysis. He doesn't use the 10-point thing. It's just asking what your opinion is on different measurements of church growth. And I hope it's self-explanatory. But if you don't understand something about it, just ask. So what did you mean by that? Or how, what, how is this supposed to work? I'm more than happy to uh, try to explain it. We had a great experience. We had over three weekends, uh, a, a time of brainstorming and prayer and conversation together as a church, creating these ideas. And now we just need a process to, again, prioritize, prioritize. So even if something gets very low scores, we're not just going to eliminate it, but we're not going to, we're not going to focus on it as much as possible. Okay, does that make sense? I know I went through that kind of fast, but I'm hoping that the uh, instructions and the explanation uh, are sufficient. Um, I'm wanting to get as many people as possible. Arlene asked, well, how many people do you think uh, we need to get? I'm going for in the neighborhood of at least 50, 50 church members. Again, if you're a guest here, I'm, I'm happy to have you weigh in as well for our dorm students. I really am hoping you guys fill one out as well because I want to hear from you. Uh, also about what things make you guys tick when it comes to thinking about what a church can offer. Um, but from the church membership, I think 50 is a, a good goal to have uh, considering, um, you know, kind of our attendance and uh, uh, the number of people that are uh, possible. So, I mean, if we could get more than that, that would be outstanding. But that's kind of what my, uh, my hope as far as the bottom line. Okay, so thank you very much for that. Um, we're going to make sure these are available. We won't hand them out every week. Um, in in uh, additional weeks, there will be additional copies out where you can grab. But we're going to try to remind you uh, to get these filled out over the next um, five or six weeks so that we can compile these. And by the end of the year, we can say, hey, this is what we've said as a church, what we'd like to prioritize um, as far as where we're headed. So I hope that, uh, I hope that makes sense. Um, and I would never want to bias this process. I would never want to weigh in and kind of tip the scale at all. That would be probably inappropriate as, of me as a pastor. But I do want to point out, I'm glad that the screen isn't down right now. Because I'm glad that when the screen is up, the most significant and symbolic part of our architecture and decorations is visible. The cross. There's just a little part of me, just a little part of me that, that weeps a little bit every time the screen goes down and we cover the cross. It's just me as a pastor, okay? I, I, I don't lose a lot of sleep over it, maybe a little bit, a little bit. So uh, there's going to be a place on there where it talks about altering how we do presentations up here. And again, I'm not trying to bias you, but you would be very blessed if you were to show your support for uh, a vision of altering. So we don't have to cover the cross, right, Kim? Yeah, see, even Kim. Now, Kim, don't, don't pressure people, okay? That would be inappropriate. This is supposed to be a, an open forum. Um, so I don't have a PowerPoint today, so I'm glad that the cross can be seen. Question number one, are you ready? When you hear the word charisma, if you, if you say that person has charisma, what does that mean? There's no right or wrong answer here. I just really want to hear from the young people. When you hear, man, that person has charisma. Uh, we don't use that word a whole lot, so maybe some of our young people won't jump at it. Maybe just your guess. If I was to say, you have charisma. What do you think that means, Gio? Yeah, kind of a big shrug of the shoulders. Charisma. How about any of you guys over here? What does charisma mean? Talent or uh, smarts? Come on. What do you think? Happy? Yeah, a person who has charisma, you might say that they're happy and optimistic, kind of a, yeah. Anything else? Oh, is it uh, Miguel? Yeah, Miguel. Smooth. Yeah. I see that coming from you, Miguel. I like that. 
smooth. I think that would be a, a good compliment. That person has charisma. Anyone else? Toby? Devotion? Devotion. Yeah, charisma, devotion, maybe. Lisa, were you and Emma talking about it and you've come to some conclusion? Happy? You stole that. It's already been said. I'm sorry. Passionate? <laughs> what do you guys think? Sophia? What? What's that? Good energy? Passionate? Wow, I didn't know you were all named Sophia, but that's great. <laughs> I know, I'm looking in your direction. All right, so yeah, we use charisma. Thank you, guys. I, hopefully the next ones won't be quite as kind of convoluted as that. But charisma, it kind of means someone who has passion and what you, what you guys ha, have all said. Um, it really means gifted in its basic form, someone who's gifted. Um, favor. Today we use it for personal appeal, tra attractiveness, or charm uh, when we say charisma. So the Bible talks about the church having spiritual charisma. And that's what the Greek simply says. That in God's church, uh, in the New Testament, people have spiritual charisma. All right, And it means spiritual gifts. The church is filled with people gifted, charismatic, right? Charisma. Now here's the next question for the young people. Can you remember any type of spiritual gift that the Bible talks about? I'll give you a hint. There are certain people who in their jobs, that job is a spiritual gift, but there's also things that God says that we can do that's a spiritual gift. Can you just name, there's about 20 of them uh, uh, distributed throughout the New Testament, often in the writings of Paul, well he'll just list them at times. But Peter mentions it in 1 Peter chapter 4 as well, and there's other places. Can you just name one or two? Just raise your hand. Again, there's really no wrong answer here if you're even close. I guess I need to work on my quizzing here because I'm not trying to be so complicated. Gio, can you think of anything? Just something nice that God does for people that they can do. You think about it. Ketsia? Yes. Love one another. Love is the greatest spiritual gift. Right? Now, is someone stretching in the back or raising their hand? Okay. you got to be careful. It's almost like a, an auction here. If I see you move or something, I'm going to call your bid and say, oh, yeah, over here. All right. I, I see that I've, I've kind of stretched myself too, too thin when it comes to this. So the, things like the apostleship. Giving, showing of mercy, preaching, faith, teaching, evangelism, miracles, healing, um, speaking in tongues or the interpretation of tongues, discerning of spirits, the giving of knowledge, wisdom. All these things are spiritual gifts that God gives his church and gives to us. Now, okay, now here's a question I, I hope I can get a little interaction on. Why does God give us these gifts? Oh, Gio, I love to see that. Why does God give us these gifts? Okay, he gives us these gifts because he wants to spend time with us, and we can give that time back. All right. Anyone else? All right, Owen, I see your hand. Why does God give us these gifts? To help us prepare for the second coming. All right, Ketsia? Be well, he gives them to us because he loves us, sure. Anyone else? Oh, Anna. Say it again. To share, to share them. Toby, to make life easier. All right, actually, I got to give Anna credit on this one. That is, and all those other things are true. God does it because he loves us. He wants to bless us. He wants to see us be creative and express ourselves. But God gives us gifts, not so that we can just say, thank you, God, appreciate it so much. I'm, I'm so glad I have all these gifts in my life right now. But he gives them to us so that we will share them with other people, right? The reason why any of you have a gift at all, tell them, I mean, just like we saw with the worship this morning, with the music, with the, the piano, with the singing, that was these individuals sharing their gift with the church, right? What Brenda and Nassim and uh, George are doing right now, 
They're using a gift. They're using a, an opportunity to serve in a willing heart. When Patsy greets at the door, all right, um, when uh, Arlene helps us and puts the bulletin together, everything that happens here is because it is something that God has called us to and given us an opportunity not just to keep it to ourselves, but to give to others, right? That's why God gives us these gifts is so that we will use them to further the gospel. All right. And uh, it's already been mentioned that the greatest gift is love. In 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 14, it says this. Now, even as the body is one and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one spirit. I like how he puts it there. For the body is not one member, but many. God has put us in his body uh, so that we would benefit one another. When you're filling out this survey, all right, and you're looking at all these things and you think, it'd be nice if the church would do this. It'd be nice if the church would do that. It'd be nice if the church would do that. I kind of wish you had a little mirror that you were looking at yourself as you said that. Because who is the church? Is it Pastor Dave? Is it Pastor Dave the church? A lot of people think that. They say, Pastor Dave, it'd be nice if the church would do this. And what they mean is, wouldn't you do that? That's exactly what they mean. I wish everyone, wouldn't it be, when you say, wouldn't it be nice to, nice to connect with visitors more? Wouldn't it be great if we had a better process of just welcoming visitors and welcoming? Put the mirror in front of yourself, right? That's what, if, if that's a, a passion that God has put on your heart, then you have a place in helping fulfill that. But we'll, what will not be helpful is if we look at this type of visioning and process and we just say to ourselves, would it be great if the church did this and then great if the church did that? But I'm not going to do it. Oh, I'd love to be part of a church that was exciting and did this and made this change and made this priority and did all that, but I won't be there when it happens. Right? We all have a role in fulfilling this vision. Um, Vince, would you help me for a second? I have a little uh, a little display here. I just want to move this up to the front uh, for my little illustration here. I've always loved puzzles. I know puzzles aren't for everyone. Perfect. Thank you so much. Puzzles are are something that's a little more cerebral for people. Um, you know, it's really for the intelligent. I, I understand that not everybody likes it. You kind of have to have a keen mind. Um, and uh, I grew up doing puzzles all the time. My, especially my mom and I, we love puzzles. Dad and sister, they would tinker with them a little, but they. Uh, oh, I need some help again. Boy, I've just got all kinds of things I need help with. Geo, would you help me this time? Geo. And, uh, well, I'm going to give, uh, yeah. Make sure everyone gets a puzzle piece. Just go down this aisle. Make sure everyone gets a puzzle. Sebastian, would you help me? Yeah, look how excited Sebastian is. Sebastian is just bursting with energy. Your mom's probably watching. She'll be so proud of you. Isn't that wonderful? And then um, someone over here, maybe Addie? No, no. Or Katie? No, no. Or Sophia? No, no. Just make sure everyone gets a puzzle piece. Yeah. Everyone should have a puzzle piece. You guys all have puzzle pieces over here? Man, these guys are just a problem. Unbelievable. Can you help out? Just yeah, just make sure everyone gets a this is important part of the uh part of the illustration. While you guys are getting your puzzle pieces, I am um, there was almost never a time in my home where we didn't have a puzzle going. Um and uh I always enjoyed it, getting something fun to drink, putting on some music. I think that's why I like Legos still. Um Legos are kind of like 3D puzzles and and it's something that I enjoy. Mom and I would mostly do it. We would have different games. It was never a rush to get. The point of the puzzle was not finishing it. You know, it's kind of like the journey is more important than the destination type thing. It was just the process of doing it, seeing the picture come together, right? 
focusing on an area that had color that was similar and seeing how the image would, would come to fulfillment. And we kind of had this, uh, we would have different games. My mom always said I had an eagle eye for pieces. I could choose them by shape or color or something like that and was uh, fairly good at being able to, uh, I didn't have to get the rubber mallet out and pound the pieces together too often. Um, but we also had this thing where we hated it. We, we liked puzzles. We didn't like the smaller puzzles. Like this one's a 550 piece. Come on, 550? That's like a couple hours. Give me a break. If it was less than 1,000 pieces, we didn't even really want to deal with it. Um, it was usually 1,000, 1,200. We did do a few that were in the 2,000 range. The, the, we're talking puzzles that took a week or more, right? That's what we like to do. But there was always a, a sense of satisfaction watching the picture come together. And there was always a little bit of a game. When it came down to the last piece, when it came down to the last piece, we kind of had a game to determine who got to put in the last piece. And sometimes we would say, no, you do it. No, you do it. You know, we, we, we kind of have this little thing between my mom and I. But then there, you'd put in that last piece and the puzzle would be done, right? And it would be completed. And you just spent, you know, 15 hours or something over the course of a week or whatever putting that puzzle, you know, a couple hours a day or whatever. But we also had this thing, if one piece of the puzzle was missing, oh, thank you so much. You can just put it right there. Does everyone have their piece? Okay, now come forward and let's put this. No, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> you're wondering what this is about. Yeah, you can just put the baskets here on the front pew. Um, but we had this thing. If, the, if we got the puzzle done and there was one piece missing, it was so annoying. We actually would throw the puzzle away. If we were going to spend a week or longer working on this thing to only get to the end and find out that the dog had eaten a piece or two or, or uh, you know, just over time uh, a piece had slipped out and gotten lost, it was not really worth it to us to have that puzzle anymore. You know, puzzles aren't that expensive anyways. We, uh, we get them for Christmas or whatever. We throw it away. We would throw it away if one piece was missing because we wanted to have a completed puzzle. We wanted it to be done. We wanted to take that pride and satisfaction of seeing a completed picture. Now, you all got your puzzle piece, right? Now, I hope it doesn't take too much to follow the analogy of the puzzle piece. Because puzzles illustrate how important each one of you is to completing the picture of this church. Every one of you plays a part in making this picture complete. And if any one of you is missing, the image suffers. That's not hard to grasp as far as an analogy, is it? If anyone is unwilling to put their peace in, use their gift, use their abilities, the entire image suffers. It's incomplete. It is not going to be able to fulfill the vision and the beauty and the opportunity that the puzzle is supposed to have. Nobody wants to feel left out. I mean, no one wants to be unwanted or like a fish out of water, that third wheel. Everyone wants to know that they play a part in something that's important. Would you agree with that? You are an important part of this church. You are. You play a role in this church. You may not understand that role completely. You may not understand what gift God has given you totally. The Bible says that when we're baptized into Christ, we invariably join his body. We become his family of believers. You can be no more separated as a, as a Christian and be spiritually alive than an arm or a leg can be cut off from the body and still be physically alive. I read a, uh, an illustration once. A pastor went to visit one of his members who had not been to church in a while. And that's what, you know, pastors do or elders or other people. And as soon, you know, the pastor knocks on the door. And as soon as the gentleman opened the door, he knew that the pastor had come. And he knew what the pastor wanted to talk about. So they sat in front of a nice fire. The pastor hadn't said a word. They just, he, the, the gentleman invited him to sit. They sat down. He said, Pastor, I know why you're here. I know it's been a while since I've been in church. But I want to assure you, Pastor, that I'm not separated from the Lord. I have my Bible, Pastor. I read this Bible regularly. And, and I know I've not been to Sabbath school. I missed some of the other meetings. But I want you to know, I listen to Christian radio, Pastor. And I, I, my, my spiritual walk is growing. And I've been watching 3ABN, Pastor. 
and, and I know I haven't been part of the body, but I'm still growing. I'm still, I'm still doing fine. And I've been watching services online. And I see what's going on. And I, I just, I want you to know, Pastor, I'm not abandoning the church. I am just as much, uh, growing in my walk with, with the Lord, even though I haven't been there. And while they're talking, again, the pastor hasn't said a word. And while they're talking in front of the fire, the fire kind of cracks and pops in a log rolls out from the fire, and they both kind of watch it for a moment. And at first that log is burning bright and the coals are red, but because it's been separated for, from the fire, after a few seconds it kind of goes black and begins to smolder and smoke rises from it, and it starts to go cold almost immediately. So the pastor, without saying a word, just gets up, picks up the tongs, and puts the log back in the fire. And almost immediately that log just lit right back up. The coals burned red and bright, the fire burned through it, and the pastor sat back down. And the church member looked at it and said, All right, Pastor, I guess I'll start coming back to church. Do you get it? If you want to burn brightly, you've got to be in the fire. If you want to be alive spiritually, you've got to be connected to the body. If you want to help us complete our picture, You've got to put your part into the puzzle. Are you puzzled yet? Do you know what your part is? Are you willing to learn what your part is? All those things doing that. I'm not saying Christian TV is wrong or watching online when you can't be there is wrong or, or Christian radio. Those aren't wrong things. We should be reading our Bibles at home. But we've got to work as a family. We've got to be in the fire together if we're going to burn brightly. Ephesians 2 verse 20 says, Together, together we are his house. In other words, if we're separated, we are not his house. We're isolated. We cease to be part of his temple. He says, Together we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself, the cornerstone. We are carefully joined together, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 21 says. We are carefully joined together, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 18. Our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wanted it. How strange a body would be if it had only one part. In other words, if a body was just a foot. The whole body was just a foot. It wouldn't really work well. Or if the whole body was an ear. No, no other part of it, just an ear. It doesn't work that way. Every part is important. Which part of your body are you ready to cut off right now? Is there any part of your body that doesn't have meaning to you that you'd just be like, yeah, let's get rid of it? I have a, a friend growing up, I mentioned this uh, to TCE when I was uh, doing some study. He lost the uh, pinky toe and the toe right next to it in an escalator accident. Uh, yeah, just to say it makes me cringe. And you think, oh, just that little toe. What does that little toe do anyways? I'd be willing, would you be willing to lose that little toe? You know, he struggled with balance his entire life. He struggled with balance because he was missing a little toe. There is no part of your body that doesn't have some meaning and part that it needs to play. And no one of you is indispens is, is uh, worthless or unnecessary. Every single person in the world wants to feel and know that they belong. And every one of you belong to this picture. If you're a guest here today, I don't want you to feel like this somehow excludes you. You know, when you're a guest, you enhance our worship. You make it feel fuller and richer when you come here. You're playing a part just by coming. Now, we want you to come and become uh, more than a guest. But even if you're a guest, you play a role. And we have a lot of guests. You know, we don't have a pianist uh, that's a member. Without Javier or without Brendan or without um, Dr. Lopez um, or without Daniel, we, we depend upon guests. We appreciate our guests. Think where we would be without visitors and guests that are willing to help us out in, in areas. And so, uh, now Javier is saying, I'm never going to that church again. The pastor keeps pointing me out. If you're a young person in this church, if you're a child, Emma, your voice 
matters. What you think matters. We care what you think. Your pastor cares. The rest of the church, they may not care, but your pastor cares. Ooh, you missed an opportunity there, guys. <laughs> Every single person, young people, dorm students, you matter. And you have a part to play here. And then to our regular old members, we need you as well, obviously. You know, last month we celebrated Labor Day, which was a celebration of the American worker. Well, as we go through our visioning process, I want you to think about your role as a Christian worker in the church and how you're going to be involved in making our vision come together. The vision we're trying to create is for the workers, the volunteer laborers, the leaders of the church who are willing to take their membership to a new level and be active in ministry opportunities. If you love Jesus this morning, you are part of the body of Christ. And every member of the body has a role, a function, a vital part to play. That's what Paul was trying to emphasize in 1 Corinthians uh, 12. He says in 1 Corinthians 12, beginning in verse 14, Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one. If the foot says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not a hand, does it make it less any less part of the body? If the ear says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not an eye, would it make it any less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if the whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? Now I want you to take that puzzle piece out one more time. Hold it in your hand. No two puzzle pieces are the same. They're all different. No two people are the same. We're all different. Each of our puzzle pieces comes in different shapes and sizes. Some are bright and colorful. Some are bland. Some are kind of odd looking. I'm talking about puzzle pieces. I'm not talking about people, am I? I would never say that people are odd looking from the pulpit. But yet, no matter how, some of your puzzle pieces might even be damaged. They might even be a little broken. But yet, we can still put that piece in the picture to complete the picture that God wants for us. We need every piece to make the puzzle complete, to make this picture come together. Make sense? Is that all right? Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, I realize that this is just a humble and simple little analogy, and it could have a greater uh, presentation, Lord, through you're a more gifted speaker, Lord, but I just pray that you would be touching all of our hearts right now, Father. Where else is it better for us to invest our energy and time right now than in the work that is eternal? So much of this world, all of this world is temporary and passing away. That doesn't mean there's not things that you've placed in this world that we can still enjoy and benefit from and love. But the greatest thing, the enduring, the only enduring thing that will last throughout eternity is the souls of people who have given themselves to you, Father. And all of us have been given gifts. All of us have been given talents. All of us have been given purpose through your Holy Spirit to help this picture come together. So God, I pray that not one would be left out. I pray when this puzzle comes together, when this image is finally and fully revealed, there would be no gaps there would be no holes. There'd be no missing pieces. That every single piece would be found and accounted for and placed in its proper plot, spot. For it'll be a beautiful thing to see that picture in the end. And we know that we're going to be working on that puzzle until the day you come, Lord. So between now and then, Father, bless us in this endeavor. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so very much. Keep your puzzle piece. I don't want to see him lying around. Write your name on the back or something like that. That would be great. God bless you guys.